Hello there, fellow loyal servants of the God Emperor, who have mistakenly stumbled upon this Battletech video, and welcome to another dose of the Battlemax of Battletech. Please excuse my paltry attempts at humor, but with today's topic being called literally the Emperor, there's no avoiding making at least one 40k joke. But jokes aside, today we are indeed covering the Emperor. Quite an obscure design in spite of the name. I am your host, the Grim Dark Narrator, and without further ado, let us learn some stuff about it, shall we? A few stats on this thing include It is an assault design massing at 90 tons, a top speed of 54 kph, and a rounded cost of 18.7 million sea bills. The Emperor is one of the earliest assault battle mechs ever, dating back all the way to 2502. It also bears the distinction of being the very first 90 plus ton battle mech to mount jump jets, as the famous Highlander began production only in 2592. In 2612, StarCore introduced an upgraded Emperor, the EMP-6A, designed for and distributed exclusively for the Starlink Defense Royal Units. It would be produced continuously until Marek forces destroyed the StarCore Industries facility with nukes on San Hoa during the Second Succession War. Production of the Emperor resumed in 3057 alongside the legendary Highlander. The Lyran Alliance and the St. Ives Compact are known to have deployed several lances of Emperors. The Capellans own several of them, but seem reluctant to deploy them in the past, despite their desperate need for frontline assault mechs. According to rumor, Chancellor Sun Tzu Liao was displeased with Makaran's trading company, which were builders of the Emperor on Menke, allegedly because all the Emperors produced to that point have ended up in Makaran's armored cavalry. The St. Ives Compact then announced his decision to sell Emperors to the Federated Commonwealth, and StarCore plants in the Lyran Alliance intended to sell a few Emperors to Alliance-affiliated mercenary units too. However, it is the story of this thing's discovery which might be the best bit of lore about it. The main individual involved was called Neron, a clan Goliath Scorpion Seeker Mech Warrior. During his time as a Seeker, Neron focused on searching through Brian caches containing mothballed battle mechs, looking for historical relics for the Starlink Defense Force, but found nothing of significance after many months of searching. Seeking a vision to guide him, Neron took a massive amount of necrosia that almost killed him, taking almost six months to recovery before getting out of the hospital again. But the gamble paid off. Neron had indeed received a vision for a designation code for an old Brian cache on the world of Dagda. After two days of searching through what appeared to be a fairly standard armory and supply dump, Neron stumbled upon an old EMP-6A with the ID code of E6A-0001. Impressively, this was the very first Emperor ever produced by the Starcore plant on San Hoa several centuries earlier. Reviewing the records for this thing, Neron discovered it was piloted by Major Alan Webster of the 4th Royal Battlemax Division. And while Webster had not fought in any battles of note, the mere fact it was the very first Emperor ever built made it a major discovery, and Neron vowed to restore the important relic to operation. In quite poor repair, after many centuries of technicians cannibalizing most of its weapons and systems, Neron utilized equipment from other wrecked battle mechs in the cache to restore it to function, resulting in a mix of clan and inner sphere technology. Showing the ancient mech to his superiors, as a reward for his discovery, Neron was then allowed to fight a trial of position for the rank of Star Commander. Handily besting his opponent's more advanced summoner at the controls of the Emperor, Neron now knew the mech would be his. Eventually transferred to the prestigious Eight Scorpion Dragoons, Neron refused multiple offers to swap out the mech, feeling that the honor of piloting such a notable and historic battle mech was reward enough. This particular Emperor would feature a hodgepodge of inner sphere and clan weapon and technology. While its Plasma Star 270 rated XL engine was intact, only its right arm Imperator Code Red LB 10X autocannon and Magna Mark III large laser remained. The jump jets and most of the armor had been stripped long ago. 
using what few resources were left at hand, Nerwen shifted the remaining weapons to the left arm and fitted a clan-grade EMRG Captain Series Gauss rifle in the right arm. And pretentious free a jump jets from the corpse of a Highlander 2C. Then, adding a Defiance ERPPC taken from a trashed Lynx to the open right torso, along with two more double heatsinks from a Lancelot. Carrying two tons each of Gauss rifle ammo and autocannon ammo reduced the armor coverage to 16.5 tons. Equipment-wise, the Emperor had better than average mobility for a 90-ton mech, with its top speed of 54 kph and the ability to jump up to 90 meters. To power the Emperor, the mech had a massive Plasma Star 270XL engine. For protection, the Emperor carried an impressive 17.5 tons of armor and case. That would protect the mech from complete destruction if an ammunition bin would be hit, although such damage would still result in the Emperor being removed out of action. Finally, to dissipate the mech's heavy heat load, it carried 12 double heat tanks. The main firepower was from a couple of Imperator Code Red LB Autocannon 10s, which were capable of firing both standard ammo and cluster ammo, which allowed the weapons to act in a similar manner to a mech-sized shotgun. Additionally, the cluster ammo let the Emperor serve in an anti-aircraft role. Secondary to the autocannons were two Magna Mark III large lasers which had a similar range to the autocannons and could do a great deal of damage in concert with them or on their own. Finally, for close combat, it had two Defiance P5M medium pulse lasers and a Fotec medium laser. The Emperor also had the honor to be the first battle mech to incorporate an XL engine, two LBX autocannons, double heatings and case together on the same chassis. As usual, we'll dedicate the second half of the episode to the variants. Unfortunately, this mech being quite an obscure thing, artwork-wise, we're gonna be relying on some pictures of minis. The few that I could actually find, that is. The EMP-1A This was the original produced by Quarry Arms with primitive components. Introduced in 2442 and produced until 2472, this one could reach a top speed of 53 kph thanks to its primitive engine. It was protected by 22 tons of primitive armor. The bulk of its primitive systems and primitive cockpit meant that it could only carry three medium lasers and an autocannon 5 in each arm. Each autocannon had two tons of ammo. Ten single heatsinks were fitted. The later production runs of this thing were used in support roles, but they were never very popular. Some of these were then upgraded to the 5A standard. The EMP-5A This one was introduced during the Age of War. It carried an autocannon 5 in each arm instead of the LB-10X that was used in the later versions. It also downgrades the two medium pulse lasers to standard medium lasers. The EMP-6A EC this one is a clan spec design carrying ER large lasers, an LB-10X and an LB-5X, supported by a prototype Streak SRM-4. It was used extensively by the clan Star Adder before being replaced by various Highlander variants. The EMP-6D This one replaces the autocannons with twin rotary autocannon 5s. All the lasers were changed to the ER variants, and the weight savings went into a couple of double heat tanks. The EMP-6L This was the Capellan Confederation variant that uses a standard fusion engine. It is equipped with a Gauss rifle and an ERPPC to snipe with, so it can take advantage of its stealth armor. The requisite Guardian ECM suite enables the armor to function, while four medium pulse lasers provide close support. Finally, Triple Strength Mimer takes advantage of the increased heat from the armor to potentially speed up the Emperor and make its already damaging physical attacks devastating. The EMP-6M This one was produced for the Three Worlds League and the Word of Blake. It is built on an endosteel frame and powered by a light fusion engine. It uses a couple of arm-mounted light Gauss rifles and also upgrades the large lasers to ER large lasers, making it very effective at ranges where many other units cannot even attempt to return fire. 
It is most effective when another unit with an improved C3 CPU is close, and can provide targeting telemetry for the Emperor. In case other units close, the 6M mounts three medium pulse lasers and an ER medium laser. Since it only carries 10 double heatings, it also makes use of triple strength Mimer. To make all this equipment possible, it carries a half ton of armor less. The EMP 6M2 This one was produced on Emrys 4 for the Duchy of Oriente, and subsequently the Oriente Protectorate. It replaces the Blakis C3i with a standard C3 system. The EMP 6S This one is a Lyran model meant for close range and restrictive terrain. It has two LBX Autocannon 20s, which can put holes in the enemy's armor using slug rounds, and then exploit the holes to damage critical systems using cluster rounds. Three medium pulse lasers and a regular medium laser provide backup. The EMP-7L This is another Capellan variant using stealth armor and the attendant Guardian ECM, along with triple strength Mimer to take advantage of the high heat level. All of it is powered by a standard engine. It removes the jump jets to make room for two autocannon 10s which can take advantage of special ammo. All six tons of this ammo is crowded into the right side of the body, so only one case is needed to protect it. Backing all of this up is one ER large laser and two medium pulse lasers. Finally for today, the EMP-8L is an upgrade of the 7L. It replaces the basic autocannons with two LBX autocannon 10s, reminiscent of the 6A. Two captured medium re-engineered lasers replace the medium pulse lasers, and the ER large laser is swapped out for a plasma rifle with two tons of ammo. The four tons of ammunition for the autocannon are protected by case in the right torso. Both the stealth armor and the triple strength mimer are retained from the 7L. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the Emperor Assault Battle Mech for today. This was another of those mechs that I didn't even know existed had I not looked into it specifically at the suggestion of a subscriber. As for my opinion on it, it does seem like a solid design. No glaring defects and it can be good at many ranges. I think it could probably use more heatsinks for the energy weapon variants though. But enough with my opinion. What about yours? Were you familiar with the Emperor? Is it among your favorite designs? What do you like or dislike most about it? As always, I look forward to your opinion on it in the comments. Thanks a lot for watching and have an awesome and healthy day.